So continuing our discussion about therapy for asthma class. In this video, we will talk about the omalizumab. Now, it is very important to know that the omalizumab is a targeted therapy for asthma. And that means that it has less side effects compared to other therapies. And in this video, we will talk about the omalizumab mechanism of action, pharmacokinetics, therapeutic uses, adverse effects, and contraindications. So first, let's talk about its mechanism of action. So the omalizumab is a monoclonal antibody. So it's an antibody that is produced by cloning a unique white blood cell, and it is recombinant meaning it is produced by some type of DNA recombination method and it is similar to the human immunoglobulin G1 and it works by targeting the human immunoglobulin A, which is the IgE. Now the immunoglobulin A plays a critical role in activating the mast cells in asthma and allergic conditions in general. So the IgA works to activate the mast cells to release the inflammatory mediators responsible for producing the asthma symptoms such as the bronchoconstriction. And the IgA also works on the eosinophils and the basophils. It activates them. So the IgA activates the mast cells, the eosinophils and basophils in asthma and other allergic conditions. And the omalizumab works to inhibit the IgE. So by inhibiting the IgE, this would inhibit the mast cells degranulation and inhibit the eosinophils and basophils. And by this, the omalizumab work to breaking the allergic cascade and control the asthma symptoms. One more point is that the last three letters in the omalizumab refers to the monoclonal antibody. So the M for monoclonal and then the AB is for antibody. And as you can see in this picture here, the omalizumab here binds to the IgE and inhibits it. Now let's talk about the omalizumab pharmacokinetics so it is available as subcutaneous injection only and once it is injected subcutaneously its absorption to the systemic circulation is slow and the beaky plasma concentration achieved after around seven days and the omalizumab is metabolized by the reticuloendothelial system and the endothelial cells and eliminated through bile in around 25 days. Now regarding it is therapeutic uses, so the omalizumab is FDA approved for treatment of moderate to severe asthma in patients older than six years old whose symptoms not adequately controlled with inhaled corticosteroids. And the patients who have asthma and uh, their symptoms are not adequately controlled with inhaled corticosteroids are classified as a step 4 to step 5 in GINA guidelines. Meaning, the omalizumab is indicated for patients in step 4 or 5 from the GINA stepwise guidelines. Now, it is very important to know that the omalizumab is not approved for use in acute asthmatic attacks. Now, the omalizumab is also FDA approved for treatment of chronic, idiopathic, or spontaneous urticaria in patients older than 12 years old who receive H1 antihistamine treatment and still experiencing symptoms. Now, the omalizumab is also approved for patients older than 18 for treatment of nasal polyps in case that the nasal corticosteroids didn't work. Regarding the off-label uses, so the omalizumab is used in anchor vasculitis, 
and, and in a bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, in curatal conjunctivitis, in drug and food allergies, in eosinophilic otitis media, and in bullous pemphigoid and in atopic dermatitis. Moving on to talk about the adverse effects. So as we mentioned before, the omalizumab is a targeted therapy. That is why it is considered to have an excellent safety profile and low side effects compared to other therapies, but it may lead to the following. So the most serious side effect that can be encountered in omalizumab use is the anaphylactic reactions and those happen after the first dose so in the second dose and after and those are rare so they happen in one in thousand of cases now the omalizumab also may lead to injection site reactions and may also lead to upper respiratory tract infections and to sinusitis and it may lead to headache and pharyngitis now the infections happen because the omalizumab affect immunity. Finally, let's talk about the contraindications. So omalizumab is contraindicated if the patient have a previous hypersensitivity reactions to omalizumab and the patients must be closely observed for several hours after the omalizumab administration due to risk for anaphylaxis. And with that, we reach the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please give us a like, comment your ideas and questions, and subscribe. And this video is a part of a bigger class. It's called Therapy for Asthma Masterclass. You can check it out. Link will be in the description of this video.